COINTELPRO stands for Counterintelligence Program, and it's basically an infiltration method used against radical groups and, uh, you know, civil rights groups of the 60s and whatever. Many of us know about their manipulation, the, fed, the federal manipulation of groups like the Ku Klux Klan, but many of us are unaware of COINTELPRO in, in regards to the Internet. Well, here's just a few articles. Exhibit A is Hal Turner. This guy gets arrested for making threats against a judge, and then it turns out that he was uh, an FBI provocateur, and he's basically paid by the FBI to spew hate on the Internet. Here's an article from Wired Magazine regarding a 2006 report for the Joint Special Operations University. Blogs and Military Information Strategy. And then you see where it says right there, Hiring a block of bloggers to verbally attack a specific person or promote a specific message may be worth considering. Well, they're already doing it. Blogs are CENTCOM's new target. And here's one from the Department of Defense's own website. CENTCOM team engages bloggers. And here's the Israeli government admitting to doing the same. Uh, that commentator on your blog may actually be working for the Israeli government. And if you look, it says, Israeli students and demobilized soldiers get paid to pretend that they are just regular folks and leave pro-Israel comments on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and other sites. And, you know, when asked about how these people are going to act on the Internet, here's what was said. Will the responders who are hired for this also present themselves as ordinary net surfers? Of course. Our people will not say, hello, I am from the Policy Explanation Department of the Israeli Foreign Ministry, and I want to tell you the following, and their mission, monitoring, and fostering discussions. But this article on Infowars.com pretty much sums it up best. So while you're wasting your time arguing the finer points of the collapse of Building 7, or the quagmire in Iraq with someone who seems unable to grasp the basic principles, your foe could well be sat behind a plush U.S. government desk in a uniform. Their mission statement is simple. Clutter up the search engines by making fake conspiracy vids and sites. They, deli they make deliberately bad videos that are designed to uh, scare away newcomers, make uh, people think that, you know, conspiracy theorists are just, you know, making something out of nothing and overanalyzing. So when you go looking for the truth, all you find are big lies. Their second job is disinformation and misdirection. They uh, insert uh, lies and infiltrate into already currently existing movements like you know the 9-11 nuke story you know the nuclear wa weapons hap uh, detonating at 9-11 or the aliens at 9-11 story these were all disinfo their third job is to scare away newcomers people who are you know finding out the truth for the very first time when they come up and they stumble on uh, their posts and their sites full of nothing but craziness it just scares people away they pose as conspiracy theorists and, and uh, they curse a lot while they're conspiracy theorists, or at least posing as them. Uh, they speak intelligently when they're scoffing at conspiracy theorists and they speak poorly and uh, stupidly when they're posing as them. Their fourth job is infighting and basically they just say that everybody's disinfo. Alex Jones is disinfo, David Icke's disinfo, Michael Tazarian is disinfo, they do a lot of Ron Paul bashing. Basically everybody's just, you know, working for the bad guys and that's what they go around doing so that they can uh, stir up distrust among every everybody. But you should know that a, a real truth seeker doesn't have time to go online and bash Alex Jones or Ron Paul. If you don't believe these people individually, that's fine. Uh, but no real true seeker does that, so there's usually an agenda. They also like to pose as anarchists, communists, Marxists, and anti-Semites. And they also like to associate conspiracy theorists and conspiracy theories with anarchy and communism and Marxism and anti-Semitism. They like to incite religious and racial tension. You'll see them just go from place to place talking bad things about Jesus, uh, or it'll be you know, against whitey or against blacks. Um, they like to go around promoting atheism. Their job is to incite racial tension and to have newcomers associate conspiracy theorists with these racial tension and with the religious uh, bigoted statements and whatever. You'll find them everywhere. Forums, YouTube. Uh, their job is just basically to create tensions and um, stupid petty fights. They go around voting down uh, good videos and voting up bad videos. You see them a lot, like especially Live Link, where you'll post a video and if it has something to do with conspiracy th 
theories. You know, the, within 24 hours, you'll have five or six scoffers show up, and then after that, it's just, you know, crickets and tumbleweeds. There's no posts after that, as if there's a group of people who are out there just checking to make sure the newest, the very newest videos and posting a little bit on each and then just moving on. So you could tell that there's an agenda there because you would think that the scoffers would show up once a month, once every two months, but no, they show up within hours and then the, the video could be there 18 months later and not a single comment. So, And in places like dig.com, they'll actually call themselves COINTELPRO agent. And if you look at the kind of stuff they post, it's pretty typical of what you'd expect. Uh, they pretty much just go looking for anything having to do with Israel, 9-11, Ron Paul, and bash us. They like to keep video makers and websites busy with nonsense. And one of their favorite things is to call for violence. You know, the, the, only the feds think to do it, and only the feds get away with it. Because if anybody else calls for violence on the internet, you're going to have goon balls at your door. So when you see someone who's calling for violence, usually that's one of them. Here's some tips. If somebody's making comments that are a little too ignorant, don't respond. Don't indulge these guys. These guys' job is to waste your time and to keep you misled, misdirected, and busy. Don't let it work. Don't make a threat on the internet. Do not make threats. And do not make contact with people who do. Here's some general tips to protect yourself. Passwords. Passwords should be always greater than or equal to eight characters, including one number, one lowercase, and one uppercase letter. The numbers should not be associated with your age or date of birth. The, the words should not be a word at all or a name. Instead, use sentences. Like, for example, the first letter of uh, a sentence, maybe from your favorite movie, your favorite uh, song. Like, for example, say your favorite song was Civil War from Guns N' Roses. One of the sentences is, I don't need your Civil War. Now, I-D-N-Y-C-W. That's the first letter from each word in the sentence. Followed up by the year the song came out, it's a good password. Encryption. Your data is vulnerable until it's encrypted. The two main standards, or at least the best ones, are AES and Blowfish. The key size should be at least 256 bit or greater. There's many programs out there that do encryption. They can do um, uh, virtual drives, encrypted files, and encrypted folders. One of them is TrueCrypt from uh, TrueCrypt.org. It's also available on my website, so that's a good program to use. And remember, just because you deleted a file and then removed it from your recycling bin doesn't mean the file is actually gone. The data is still there, but the reference to the file is gone. You need uh, a file shredding program, and there's many out there. There's a little known spy effort going on between the NATO nations, mainly, and the NSA called Echelon. This system uses word and voice recognition and can scan cell phones, emails, chats, searches, pretty much everything. General tips for getting around this stuff. Deliberate misspellings in text. Random punctuation marks in spaces. This kind of stuff can fool uh, computer programs. Use code words instead of the real words and get a firewall. This won't help you in terms of being scanned, but they sure are useful. And for you COINTELPRO guys, this is for you. Look at this. This is the future you want. Don't you think they have a place for you in their future? We don't have a choice. They're going to win. Can't you see that? There's nothing stopping them now. There's me.